Thank you all. 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 I think I speak for everybody on the stage and we say we love you. You're phenomenal. I just called Congressman Gardner to congratulate him. He was gracious. I told him that uh, it might take a day or two, but I would instruct my team to work with him to make a smooth transition. I told him the, be the job of the United States Center for from Colorado is the best job in the world. Yes. The best job in the world. I thought about Abe Lincoln, you know, his famous story about the boy that stubbed his toe. And he said, it hurts too much to laugh, but he was too big to cry. I do respect the will of the voters here in the state of Colorado, but I also thought about my dad. You may remember, some of you, that he lost an election and he said the voters have spoken, the blankety blanks. But in, in that spirit, I do want to uh, say that I really want to thank the people of Colorado for the great privilege of loaning me their power to serve as a senator from Colorado for the last six years. And it's, as I've said, with that same, thank you, with that same spirit that I do wish Congressman Gardner the best as he prepares to represent our state in the U.S. Senate. We truly live in the greatest state in the nation. We do. And it means so much to me to have been able to represent that optimism and determination in the United States Senate. You know, like all of you, the guiding light in my life has always been my family, my wife and constant companion, Maggie. Our, our, our wonderful children, Tess and Jed. The, they're, they're the reason that I chose to enter public service, and their love and their inspiration has always supported me during the good times and the bad times. My sister Dodie and my brother Brad and Jane are here. Many of you, uh, many of you know that we lost our brother Randy last year. And I'm so happy that his wonderful children, Tarn and Tori, are here with us tonight. You know, Randy was always the conscience of our family. And I used to say he would, he would say what I was thinking. But he used to think what we all ought to be thinking. And he was the smartest and the most principled person I've ever known. And in many ways, this campaign's been dedicated to his memory. He's I also want to thank my incredible staff for the tireless work they do for all Coloradans. Yeah. I have I've had the great fortune to work with the most talented and passionate people that you'll ever meet. And in particular, I want to single out my chief of staff, Mike Sozan. And, and my state director, Jennifer Rokla. Yeah. I also want to pay special thanks to my campaign manager, Adam Dunstan, and to his number two, Jennifer Ritter. They, they built this campaign from the ground up. I couldn't have run this race without their counsel and patience. They knew when they came on board they were signing up for an enormous undertaking. And their grit and determination is why we ran a campaign that we're all proud of. Yes. And I want to turn to all of you who've worked so hard. You know, it was my name printed on the ballot. But we built this campaign only because of all the friends and supporters that I've been so honored to have. As you know, we had 100 field organizers. We had 25 offices. 7,500 volunteers were part of this campaign. In, 
In short, as Maggie put it, we did democracy. We did democracy. You all know I'm a mountain climber. Yeah. And you all know that I've said over and over again as I approached this campaign, I thought of it as the biggest, baddest mountain that I'd ever faced. And in that spirit, I want to share a story. A few Decembers ago, I skied to the summit of Pikes Peak. So that's in the winter. December's in the winter. <laughs> and I happened to be there all alone, atop the mountain where Catherine Lee Bates wrote America the Beautiful. And while I was there, I looked down on Colorado Springs, and I could see Pueblo in the distance, and I could feel Boulder and Denver even further away. But instead of seeing that scene as a division between the red and blue communities in our state, I saw the red, white, and blue hole that makes our country the greatest nation on earth and the envy of the world. <laughs> Wallace Stegner, the great Western writer, challenged us to build communities to match our scenery. That day, I knew what he meant. Many of you knew my dad, Mo. He helped raise six kids. He played for the Denver Nuggets, and he served in the Congress for nearly three decades. He admired a man by the name of Will Rogers. Will Rogers was the John Stewart of his time. <laughs> and he was particularly fond of Rogers' admonition to all of us that we're all here just for a short time before we pass on. So get a few laughs, do the best you can, live your life so that whenever you lose, you're ahead. As long as I've had the privilege to serve the people of Colorado, I've always felt that I've come out ahead, and tonight is no exception. So, so I was going to say tomorrow, but maybe, maybe Thursday, maybe, maybe Friday. We're all going to go back to work to make sure our communities match our scenery. Thank you for your love, your passion, your support. I'll never forget it. It's been the, the greatest privilege of my life to be a United States Senator from Colorado. Thank you all. Thank you. A gracious concession speech.